Hey little souls, it's Gobius Blusha and I'm here to tell you a little bit about what we as Celtiberian polytheists hold as sacred and holy. Well, you know, as, as a polytheist, we have different stuff that we hold as sacred and we believe to be holy. And I want to, I want to tell you how the structure of this is, not only for the general Siberian community, as well to my tribe, my tradition. We like to call us ourselves a tribe. Uh, my tradition is Celtica Hispana. Now we're only three people. It's not much, but we're not looking for have a large number of people following us, we only want to honor our ancestry and our beliefs. So, uh, yeah, there are things that we hold sacred, sometimes there are differences between the theoretical interpretations of the evidences, so sometimes I will be referring only to my tradition, sometimes it will be general. So, we have, uh, inspired by the Irish tradition, we sometimes inspire a lot of Celtic stuff, Gaulish and others, because it's the most well-documented um, belief within the Celtic world. We have three realms, with a little difference to the Irish traditions. We have an upper realm, which is the sky. We have a middle realm, which is the, the earth, the land, where we inhabit right now. And we have a realm below, which is the underworld. We have this difference, the underworld, not the sea, because since we unite all the beliefs that we study throughout the Iberian Peninsula, even if they're not from the same tribes and cultures, uh, which were similar but not always the same or not shaped in the same way, even if the core value is the same. Um, many of them, actually most of them, aren't coastal tribes, they weren't near the sea, so it's quite unlikely that they would have the sea as a, a divine realm filled with gods and spirits and, and creatures. So, you know, Northwestern tribes probably had that belief. Their cultures are pretty much similar to the one in the, Bre in the British Isles than the ones in the middle of the peninsula. But to make a summary of all those beliefs, we prefer to regard the underworld, not the sea. Uh, nevertheless, we consider the water to be one of the main uh, means of passing through to the underworld, even when you're not dead. Um, we hold as sacred our gods and goddesses, of course, and minor spirits and creatures and entities and genies that we regard as fairies, as um, uh, genies of the place, spirits of the place, etc. And we call these Anamunes eninitie, Anamunes eninitie, sorry, which would be roughly translated, would be a cultivation reconstruction, roughly translated as spirits of the place or souls of the place. All the cultivation translations are quite roughly, by the way. Um, we could work with experts that give a more scientific reconstruction to the language, but it would be theoretical as well, so we try not to complicate ourselves too much. We don't believe that language is the main thing that we have to reconstruct. So we have the Anamunes, the spirits of the place, which we don't have, we have reference to their cult 
in the Iron Age, but we don't know the names and the shape and the exact beliefs. So we believe that medieval folklore, the medieval Iberian folklore, is a reminiscence of these beliefs. And we study the medieval folklore sacrificing the original names and the original shapes, but that's the wonders and marvels of Reconstructionism. Um, okay, gods minor spirits. Um, we follow um, a cycle, a, a will of the year, as it is said nowadays. We eight festivals, I won't say the names right now, that's for another video. Um, four harvest festivals which names and interpretation are inspired again by the Irish tradition as it happens with the Gaulish traditions as well. And um, the two solstices and two equinoxes. Some may say that solstices and equinoxes weren't important to Celtic people but I believe that not true, at least for the Celtic I won't argue uh, regarding the Irish traditions, which I also believe that they were true. I mean, even if the megalith the megalithic constructions weren't from the times of the Celts, um, there are many evidences that they were used by the Celts not to sacrifice virgins on a stone altar, of course, but there were there are evidences of their use in the Celtic ages. Um, in our traditions, our ancestors constructed uh, observatories to be shed light upon and carvings to be shed light upon at the moment of solstices and equinoxes. Uh, some mountains and high places. Um, had sanctuaries because they have the perfect height, the perfect altitude to observe the sun in community at those very moments where the sun were just in front of them. Um, I don't know. There are many evidences that suggest that our ancestors hold a sacred equinoxes and solstices. Um, we believe the sun and the moon to be sacred and we hold certain places as sacred as well mountains, caves, uh, lakes and rivers because rivers are believed to be where the common folk um, were taken to the underworld through, through a boat woman who is a goddess of course uh, I'll explain that it's a theory, it's not completely demonstrated. Uh, but yeah, rivers, lakes, caves, mountains, holy groves. We have holy groves. We actually have the root Nemeta for, from Nemeton, of course. So yeah, it's known to have been uh, Nemetons in the Iberian Peninsula. Um, some big stones which sometimes are shaped as animals naturally were, were held as sacred as well. And, uh, do you know, all these special places, cliffs, uh, also we believe that they hold sacred as well underwater currents and box. Yeah, that's pretty much about the places. If I remember something else, well, I will dedicate an entire video to these things. Other things that were considered sacred was the trees. Some trees were considered sacred and some plants were considered sacred. And the walls apparently had a magical purpose and we believe that magic for our ancestors were only divine rules. So when you the things of divination and you added magical things to stuff, you're making it divine in some way. So walls were added with uh, ashes from some dead people, probably strong warriors or people they believe could be protective. Um, or deer horns, uh, I, mean, I mean a whole amount of stuff, some of which are in our modern folklore yet. 
So it's a very interesting thing that walls apparently were sacred as well. Yeah, that's pretty much of it. And we also held sacred some animals, some animals that sometimes were regarded as totems because they were animals that were was linked to entire tribes which names of these tribes were coming from the native name to the animal itself such children of the wolf for example that's just one of of the tribe um, tribal names translation and there are many animals that we consider sacred being uh, linked to a specific deity or not, or at least if it is unknown for some of the animals, we hold sacred many animals such as the vultures, the ravens and crows, the bull, um, the deer, the beer, bear, the bear, sorry, um, wolf, goat, uh, wild boar, and a large number of animals that we hold sacred and we also hold sacred our ancestors um, our ancestors of culture and um, religion and also our ancestor, our mighty ancestors the mighty ancestors are the legendary people that, whose names transcended to history um, through the impression, through you know, through being impressive to the Roman historians, and um, you know, there are many, not many of them, sorry, there are, there aren't many that transcended through their names, but there are some of them. Usually, people that rebelled against the Roman conquest and made made the Romans had a very bad time, and this sometimes impressed the emperor or you know the ruler of the time and m mentioned them in their in the writings and that's pretty much all that I can say I think this video will be longer than I expected but um, it's something that you can think about if you have any petition on something that you would like to no, especially you can tell me and I can make a video specifically for that topic. I will um, I will discuss all the topics of course, but if you wanna if you have a preference that you want uh, first and not last, then please uh, tell me and I'll do my best to to do so. Um, well, whatever, I'm speaking too much. Thanks for watching. If you have any thoughts, any suggestions and whatever, please leave a comment below. Like if you like the video, dislike if not. I know that I'm talking very awfully today, but if the information was interesting, please like. And if you're interested in know more things about the Celtiberian polytheist beliefs or my tradition, my tribe beliefs, please subscribe to be updated. And that's all guys, thanks for watching again, may the gods bless you all, bye, I'm going right away.